Hi everyone, I'm Kathy B and I'm bringing you today's Wednesday in the Word. I have a confession to make. I have not been looking forward to going back to church. I have loved this time of online church. I love being at home, sitting in my lounge room with my family, watching it all on TV. I get to visit two different church services, even more if I want to. And I also just love the opportunities that we've had to minister to our church family um, outside of our church building. Every week um, during this time of restrictions, we've been able to visit um, some of our families and deliver them boxes of food each week. And it's just been a wonderful time of catching up with them. We can spend half an hour each night chatting to them and just seeing how that they go, how they're going. And some nights, my husband and I wouldn't get home till like 11 o'clock. We'd been spending so much time visiting people. So it's had me questioning, do I need to go to church? Some people have said to me, it's not the building, it's the people. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. I was in no way missing the building, the seats and the half hour drive that it takes us to get to church. I don't really care that much about the singing since I have a medical condition, that means I can't sing. But I worship in my car or at my computer or in the kitchen just the same as if I do in church. And I wasn't missing the people as I was getting the chance to mingle with the people that we've been visiting. So Sunday week ago, my church went back and I dragged my feet and I went along with my family and I was not as thrilled as other people to be there. I felt a bit resentful and I was missing my quiet Sunday morning church home routine. I was resentful of the COVID-19 restrictions that has taken away many of the good parts of church, like the sitting with friends, the morning tea, the fellowship time. Did I really need to go to a church building just to listen? I've been mulling this over for quite a few weeks and I felt like I needed to let go of the whole church building thing and go back to basics. My why, my why about why I'm a Christian, why I love Jesus, why I go to church. Around 30 years ago, a man called Bob George spoke at a youth encounter convention. I wasn't involved in organising these youth encounter conventions just as I am today with the Queens and Baptist Women events. And as Bob George spoke through his sessions, he pointed out that we are hopeless. We can do nothing to get to heaven. We can try to do all the good works and act the right way, but it's not enough. At the time, I felt quite guilty about my Christian walk, and I felt guilty that I didn't pray enough or read my Bible enough. And every time I made a resolution to do better, something would happen, and I would forget, something would come up, and I just felt like a failure. After one of Bob's sessions, I felt really low. What was the point of being a Christian if I couldn't be good at the Christian things, if I couldn't be good at praying or reading the Bible? And at his next session, his words set me free. He was focusing on Hebrews 10 and verses 11 and 14 say, Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But when this priest, Jesus, had offered for all one sacrifice for all sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since that time he waits for his enemies to be made his footstools. For by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those that are being made holy. This new covenant, the fact that Christ's sacrifice was once for all thing, blew my socks off. The high priests in the old covenant had to offer the sacrifices day after day, sacrifices that can never take sins away. And Jesus offered his own life as a sacrifice and then sat down at the right hand of God. It is finished. The only thing we have to do is accept the gift of sacrifice and put our faith in Jesus. There are no conditions apply that make you more or less saved. You can't fail at how much or how little Bible reading and praying you do. And while Jesus desires to have a relationship with you, he doesn't love you less or drop you down to a lesser quality of savedness. I'd lost focus on the why. Take away all the trimmings of the church building, the songs and the people. The why is that Jesus died for me. He saved me and he sat down at the right hand of God, not expecting any more from me other than my love and devotion. My service to him is a result of my love and devotion. 
and my gifts, the gifts he has given me, are being used in several different ministries and I have a great passion for what I do. 2 Peter 1 verses 5 to 8 says, For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here's the answer to why do I need to go to church? Why do I need the fellowship of my fellow church members? As we learn and grow in knowing Christ, our desire increases and we want to learn more and spend more time in word and prayer. Acts 2 verses 43 to 47 has a beautiful picture of the early church. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. And every day they continued to meet in the temple court. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to the number daily those who were being saved. I love that all believers were together and had everything in common. And they continued to meet together in the temple court, broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. This to me is what the church is about. Being devoted to the teaching and to the fellowship. Having opportunities to serve those in need. It sounds so generous, joyful and loving. There is a fluidity about this early church that had no tradition or normalcy who followed Jesus' example. They broke away from the old way of doing things and created a new way. They still met in the temple courts, but their faith extended far beyond. The COVID-19 virus has given us an opportunity to reflect on what church means and to find new ways to do church. Let's set our sights on a new goal, not to go back to normal, but to make the most of the opportunity given to us to be joyful, fluid, generous and loving our fellow church members and communities. Thank you.